Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. Delighted on this episode to be talking with author, illustrator, comics creator, Shanti Rai. Shanti, thank you for jumping in, joining, and talking with me for a few minutes today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. My pleasure. My pleasure. I will mention the book that I know you best for here at the beginning, and that is Senan from Avery Hill. I really enjoy a lot of what Avery Hill publishes and was just overjoyed to discover them and, and the work that they produce. So sending great affection for that book. And I'm curious by means of a first question, what makes comics this unique way to tell a story for you? I think it's kind of, for me, it's the perfect combination of uh, like novel writing and mm -hmm. filmmaking. I, I used to be really into filmmaking and before I went to uni and started working on comics and things, I was looking to get into film and specifically editing. And I think um, comics are like, it's just, it's like a film put out onto the page, you know? And when you watch films, you kind of can see exactly the exact same shots happening in a film as you see on a comic. And for me, that just tickles my brain. It's just like the perfect medium, I think. And you can do such interesting things that you can't do with a novel, um, visual storytelling wise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's why I came to it. For me, it's just, it's ideal. I think because I also, it can be difficult to keep your interest. I have, you know, an ADHD brain. <laughs> <laughs> it can be difficult for me to get through a novel sometimes. But with a comic, like there's never been a comic I've not finished in a couple of hours, you know. Once yeah. I'm in it, I can't stop reading because it's just so captivating. And also, you can kind of go back over it a thousand times and you'll always see new details. Mm -hmm. I love rereading comics that I love and just seeing things that I've never seen before because every single panel will be full of detail I think that's really cool yeah they're they're such extremely layered books and uh, I mean to catch the the story that's happening with the words the story that's happening with the images sometimes the smaller images you don't catch the first time through I, I love comics for rereading yeah exactly and there's stuff that I've forgotten that I've put in my comics sometimes. And I'll go back and I'll look in the background and I'll be like, oh, yeah. Because I often will put references to songs that I'm listening to or a book that I've read or whatever at that period in my life. Mm -hmm. And because like with Senin, it took me four years. Um, and so I completely forgot doing that. <laughs> I'll go back and I'll see something and be like, oh, yeah, I remember that period. <laughs> it could be a time capsule like for the author as well. It's quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that also speaks to sort of the time frame that goes into creating a four year period to create a book, because there is so much detail. There's so much artistry at the story level, at the visual story level, at, at all of the story level. So uh, sending appreciation in that way as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> I think it took me a lot longer because I got sick about mm, about a year in. And so my my process slowed down massively. It took a lot longer, but yeah, it it is it is quite a a, a labor intensive process, especially if you're writing and drawing at the same time, because you have to have a not only solid script and dialogue and whatnot, but then you're also having to create like a hundred pieces of art to go along mm -hmm. with the with the script, you know. So, yeah. yeah. Do you have um? favorite tools favorite media to work with when you're creating i've pretty much universally been using clip studio mm -hmm. um, since since i started learning to draw I, I started learning about 10 years ago and that was the first program i picked up and it seems that that's the one my brain likes and so like, i've tried to learn photoshop i've tried to learn procreate and i, I can do it fine on those but um that was kind of the one. And I do find it easier to draw on paper and then scan in. But I don't know. I really like digital and I like the way it looks. And I'm very indecisive when it comes to colour. And so I like being able to just play around with the colours. And 
I, I will change my mind five times before you'll see the final colours as they are. Um, with Senon, the colours were not like this. <laughs> In the first draft at all, I changed them completely. And that's, yeah, that's what I really like about digital particularly. And Clip Studio is very accessible to everybody. Like, you don't need much. If you've got a very cheap drawing pad um, and then Clip Studio, which isn't expensive, it's a good kind of way to get into digital drawing. And I suppose with Procreate now, though you do need a, a quite expensive iPad to be able to access it. Right. So, yeah, I think for people, especially me as a teenager learning how to draw, I didn't have, I wasn't able to access like Photoshop and everything because it's so kind of outrageously priced <laughs> that yeah. it's it's kind of yeah it's a good program to get started with. Yeah. yeah. Now in terms of um sin and there's there's a mythological element, it's very character centered. There's lots of interesting uh inspirations and storytelling happening. Uh, I'm curious about what you hope readers take from your work and from the book. Yeah. Well I think I I really, really love kind of allegories and fairy tales and fables. That's what I did my kind of dissertation comic on. And uh, specifically, like, the fact that in every single culture, we have the same stories with the same... Um, the same <laughs> themes and, <laughs> and things like that. Um and so I think I wanted to weave some of those kind of themes, character building, having different, having like the hero character and the like comedic relief and all of this kind of stuff woven in. But then also kind of because it's for a young, a younger audience, I guess, it's to kind of maybe make people question the world that we live in. Because I think you all, you you will get to a stage in your childhood where you kind of start to realize especially if you're if you grow up in a kind of privileged western background like I do living in London um you you'll get to a point where you start to question the world and the way things are <laughs> and for me that was around age 11 going to visit my family in Bangladesh and just you know seeing children working seeing children sleeping on the streets seeing the factories where my clothes are made and being able to look on the label of my clothes and being like, oh, that was made here and seeing the conditions that people live in. And that really, like, for the first time, opened my eyes to what the world is really like. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you can be quite protected and quite distant from the reality of where our things are from. And so I think I also wanted to put that theme into the book. But from the perspective of someone who was doing the working, kind of, and people not necessarily knowing that that's going on and that's how they're getting the things that they're getting without spoilers but yeah yeah that's a, a powerful theme and a powerful idea to explore and it's definitely something that gets overlooked in many ways so i'm glad you uh, bring that sense of it out yeah and i guess in a small a small way but but yeah it's important to me as well i think yeah specifically because of my family being from kind of that background and mm -hmm. uh, me growing up in the UK and kind of not being privy to it I think yeah 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 well um the book is with Avery Hill and I'm curious about uh, as you've gone through your creative journey you mentioned a, a dissertation comic and uh things like that i'm curious about some of the most positive experiences you've had some of the most memorable experiences so far in terms of collaborating with folks and um, sharing your work yeah well I think the comic scene in general I suppose I don't have much experience of it outside of the UK but <laughs> the comic scene in the UK um, is so welcoming and so kind of supportive um, from, like from the get-go I, I created my dissertation comic and that's how Avery Hill found me and then and that's how a few other I think they found me through um Broken Frontier mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like a comics review kind of situation and that is kind of the epitome of what the comic scene in the UK is like 
Broken and Frontier will kind of review really, really small comics makers. They'll go to kind of graduation shows and whatnot and kind of put people on a pedestal that might not necessarily have had any foot in the door before that. Mm. And the whole thing is like that. Like everybody I meet is lovely. They're all willing to like give you opportunities and um, it can feel a bit daunting if you're not kind of in the network <laughs> to get into the network. But it doesn't take much to get in. All you have to do is be like, I made a comic. Can you read it? And <laughs> someone will. And someone will inevitably be like, wow, this is great. And they'll read it and they'll maybe review it and maybe recommend it to someone. And that's been the most surprising thing for me. I thought it would be so much harder and so much like I didn't think it was going to be as supportive as it is. Um, so it's really, really nice. And from what I've heard from other people, the comic scene in different countries is much the same. I think yeah. because it's quite a small section of publishing. You tend to it tends to be very like friendly and welcoming and yeah it's really nice cool very cool yeah yeah that's the impression that i've gotten from most people that have talked with me so that is uh wonderful glad that you found the space to to create and by means of a final question i'm curious about what currently has your creative attention and I always ask about online spaces or places where people can go to follow what you're doing, um, social media, that could be conferences, anything like that, that you'd like to mention for listeners. Yeah. Well, for my, what's got my creative attention currently, I've been rereading um, Sleeping While Standing by Haki Soma. <laughs> That's also from Avery Hill. And I read it when it first came out. And it was great. And I recently reread it because I'm I'm starting to write a comic about uh, my experiences with fibromyalgia. And Takisoma has MS, and she kind of did a bit of work on that in her in her like comics anthology. Wow! Wow! And it's just great. Like it's so brilliant to be able to kind of see someone's journey from that perspective. And also, her life is just crazy. I feel like reading that book. <laughs> It's just like, wow, I can't believe all this stuff happened to this person. But she's brilliant. And like her her voice is just great. Um, and also I've been rereading Palestine by, is it by? Joe Sacco. Mm -hmm, which, mm -hmm. which, yeah, it's just phenomenal. Again, like comics journalism. Um, I think it's just a brilliant medium as well to be able to tell a story through. Um, yeah, you can find me on mostly Instagram I'm not very present online because I'm currently working on on um yeah my next book so <laughs> I'm pretty much holed up doing that mm -hmm. but my Instagram is at uh, Shanti Draws so you can find more about me on there and hopefully I'll be posting updates I posted like the first three pages of the comic I'm working on um about like my journey so <laughs> If that is of any interest, you can have a look there. Wonderful, um, wonderful. Yeah, looking forward to that comic and looking forward to the the ways that you use your art to explore some experience. Um, so, thank you, Shanti. Thank you for the time. Did we miss anything that you want to make sure to share before we close out? I don't think so. I think it's covered. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, thank you again, and glad to talk anytime as work is coming to be. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Thanks.